Hey guys, Mike from Shimino's Workshop. I wanted to do a video, um, take a stab at explaining in parallel or in series as it might pertain to Sabre installs, especially when it comes to using um, a stock NeoPixel PCB connector or some other connector that might have pixels on board. Um, so I figured I'd try to explain the dis difference, maybe visually, as well as just, you know, speaking through it, of in parallel versus in series. Um, and then also talk about the other option, which is called independent, um, which is on another sheet of paper. So hopefully this is coming through okay. It looks like it is on the camera's LCD display. But um, so up top, we, we have what we would call in parallel. And then on the bottom what we have uh, in series. So in, in series is, is sort of what it sounds like, right? We, we have, let's say this is the board, the sound board like a CF-10 or like a Profi board, right? It doesn't matter, it's just the source. It's, it's what's driving the, the pixels. Um, and the line just represents the connection, right? The, the power, the data line that's going from the source that's going from the source to maybe some accent LED maybe another accent LED and then finally out to the blade it doesn't have to be this right you could it could just be you're running two accents off of one data line it could be you're running an accent and a blade off the same data line off the same source Right, it, it doesn't really matter what the destination is, let's say. Um, just that you have multiple pixels, right? I'll, I'll stick with pixels as opposed to like your traditional three millimeter or five millimeter LEDs. Um, so it doesn't really matter what you're trying to drive or how, right, just that you're, you're, dri you're trying to drive different. So maybe you have two crystal chambers, you know, one on the lower side, one on the upper side. Um, and you wanna keep your wiring simple and you only wanna use one data line and in your config, so like thinking profi board in your config file, you only wanna define, um, well, I, I won't go there yet. But from a hardware perspective, you want to keep it simple, right? You want to use one data line to control these two accents as well as the blade. Maybe there's maybe one of these accents is the stock NeoPixel connector. So maybe this is your crystal chamber accent. Maybe this accent represents the five pixels that are on. Ugh. The five pixels that are on the stock NeoPixel connector. And then of course your blade. Number of pixels doesn't really matter. The the what matters is that you want to be able to control these pixels independently using one data line. Now, in this example thinking profi board config, you have three blades. There's one data line, but you're gonna treat these because you want to be able to style them or have them function independent of each other. You would define these as three blades using sub blade feature of profi board. I believe CF10 now also has a concept of sub blades. They're not called sub blades, but essentially you're able to control using one data line you're able to control and style and, and make these things do different things. Um, for example, maybe while your blade is on and doing all the things blades normally do, maybe your accents are mimicking, maybe they're not. Maybe your accents are pulsing or doing something else, okay? When you want that ability, you go series, you go in series or We'll, we'll talk about the other option, which is independent. 
where you would use two data lines, but I'll, I'll get to that. So in series is if you're going to want to keep your wiring simple, quote unquote, and have one data line control these things. Now, typically when you do this, right, th this line would represent your power, your positive, your, your bat, posit uh, bat positive. The line would also represent your LED or your ground wire coming from one of the LED pads, as well as your data line, which is typically coming from data one. So those would all come here into your one pixel for your crystal chamber, let's say. Then they would come out, right? So most pixels have in and then they have out. And that's important, especially for the data line. The power, not so much. The power lines, not so much. You could run power directly here. You could run power directly there. You could run power here um, separately, if that's easier for your installation. But typically, your pixels are going to have in, followed by out, followed by in, followed by out. So that's all in series. Um, and then in your profi board config file, you would define these as three blades. You would use your shared power pins defined at the top of the config file, which just means that these blades are all sharing power. They're sharing that LED so that profi board knows to continue sending power because you you might turn your blade off but you might want these accents to do something still even though the the saber blade is powered off these accents might be pulsing blinking doing something while the blade is off and therefore need power so that shared power pin define is what allows that to happen. It allows you to shut your blade off, but still drive power to these other things. Um, so you're defining three blades, you're defining that shared power pin, and then in your blade config, right, you have to set up these sub blades. Um, and maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll put an example in the description of the video of what that blade config definition would look like. But essentially you're telling Profi board that there's 136 pixels in total, and that blade one. And I don't think the order matters, but you're you're basically saying that blade <clears throat> one has one pixel, and that's going from zero to one. Then you're saying blade two, so that this is blade number one, blade number two. Well, that has five pixels, which goes from one to six. And then blade number three, which is your blade, the, the actual blade, is then going from six to, I don't know, 136, let's say. And then in your preset, where you style these, you now have the ability to style each of these independent. So subblades in series, one data line allows you to control as many things as you want. Really, I can't see that there would be an upper limit outside of just running out of power eventually, right? If you're trying to power too many pixels. Um, but in concept, if, if power was not a limitation, you could really just keep extending this. So that's in series. And this, you could consider this a little more complicated of a use case. Now we move up to in parallel. In parallel has one data line, right? So again, we have our source board. This line coming off of the board represents, again, data, power, you know, positive, negative, or positive and ground. And, you know, you're only, sorry, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the, uh, out of the light, just creating a shadow. And 
you, you know, this here represents sort of a split, right? Like a, like a Y split or a junction point. This junction could happen here. Maybe you have two wires coming off of data, the data pad, but generally, it, well, that doesn't matter. The, the point is there's only one data line controlling this option, and that data line is going to two different places. And so you cannot control these independently. There's one data line, and in your config files, you're, you're specifying how many pixels you're controlling for that one blade. Subblades don't work here because the data line is not going in and then out and then in and then out. Your data line is literally going to the blade and also to your accents. And this could be split more than once. Maybe you have another accent, like your five pixels on the PCB. This is an easier setup. It's, I, in my mind, it's not really easier than wiring the in-series connection. But from a config file perspective, it's a lot easier because you don't have to deal with the subblade definition, which is going to be confusing when you look at it for the first time. And you don't, your, your preset or your blade styles are also easier because it's, there's only one. But the drawback is you can't control these things independently. And so we typically call this blade mirroring or maybe just mirroring. So in, in your config file, regardless if it's ProfiBoard or CF10 or Gar Golden Harvest or Verso, you have to define the number of pixels for the maximum, right? So whatever thing you're driving or things that you're driving, the one that has the most is what you have to define, right? Because you want your blade to work properly. Obviously, your blade has 130 pixels. You want them all to light up. Now, let's break down a blade. You know what? I'll put that on. Do I have... I'll turn this over. Let's just look at a blade. <laughs> Keep it clean, folks. I'm going to break the blade into parts. Tip. Base. Let's say there's five there. Let's say there's 20 here. So for 130, the middle is about 105, let's say. Okay, so I don't know, it doesn't have to be this, but just for example, let's say that this is a blade, a pixel blade, that has 130 total pixels. Now, in our example, Right, our blade has 130 pixels, but we said we had an accent with one pixel and another accent with five pixels. So over here, we'll, we'll pretend that this is the crystal chamber with one pixel. And we'll come over here and we'll pretend that this is like a stock PCB with five pixels. Okay. So using in parallel, which is completely fine, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it, but you can't control these five pixels independent of the blade. So whatever the blade is doing, these pixels are doing. It's mirroring, right? It's mimicking the blade. Same thing with this pixel. But there's a caveat to that. For example, 
when you do drag effect, that's why I called out these 20. In 130 pixels for a blade, well, this is really pixels 110 through 130. So when I'm doing the drag effect, only these pixels are reacting differently than the rest of the blade. So let's say you have a red blade, right? It's a Vader saber. The whole blade is red by default, and it's kind of doing, it's all doing the same stuff. Like it's, it's a stable blade, doesn't have unstable fire effects or anything, right? It's just lit up, it's all red. So all of these 130 pixels are red, right? Easy. But now I point my saber down and trigger a drag effect. Well, the 110 pixels are still red, but these 20 pixels are no longer red. They're white or whatever, however you styled your, um, your drag effect. What are these pixels doing down here? This pixel is mimicking the blade, but there's only one pixel. It's doing whatever the first pixel in the blade is doing, which is red. What about these five pixels on that PCB? What are they doing? The same thing. It's doing whatever these five pixels are doing, which is red. Your blade is the only thing up here. These last 20 pixels in the 110 to 130 range is the only thing that's doing the drag effect. Maybe that's okay. Maybe it's not okay. Maybe you want your accent crystal, right? Your kyber crystal that's powering this. Maybe you want that to have some sort of effect going on. Maybe these five pixels, since you won't see them because you have your blade in, maybe these five pixels being red is no big deal. But maybe this one pixel, which you might want to be doing something, it won't red. Well, let's think about lockup or blaster block. Typically, lockup is going to be within this range. Right? You're, you're typically never going to see these five pixels because they're shoved into the blade socket. And the tip usually doesn't show an unstable effect or not, not unstable, I'm sorry, like a blaster. Usually blaster block doesn't hit the tip. Usually a blaster block or a blaster bolt is going to be sort of in this middle range. Lock up, um, blaster block, right? Clash. Same thing. When the middle of the blade is showing the effect, the first pixel or the five pixels are usually not doing anything. They're still red. Same concept. These things are doing whatever the one or five pixels are doing, which is typically nothing. So I hope that helps understand how in parallel works and helps you decide, do I want to go in series with subblades and maybe deal with the added complexity or keep it simple and go in parallel? There's one more option that I don't know that it's unique to the stock PCB, but it's certainly a use case for the stock PCB, which is independent. And this allows for the same functionality as subblades using the in series option and one data line. The difference here is two data lines. One data line going to the blade one data line, separate data line, going to the accent or going, in this case, to the stock PCB. It functions the same as, um, what's it called? As the in-series option with sublates, you, you accomplish the same thing, but hardware is different, meaning you have two data lines that you have to run. Um, I don't personally see a benefit or an advantage disadvantage of going in series or going independent. It really de depends on do you want to run two data lines or one and can your brain handle the sub blade 
definition because it can get a little weird and actually you know what actually while I'm looking at this here I had printed Dimitri's manual which shows those options right so v2 is the in parallel option v3 is the in series option v4 is the independent option now besides the number of data lines being being the difference in going in series or going independent how you assemble the pcb is also different we'll forget v1 because there's no pixels in v1 mode so not really a use case that we need to consider in this discussion. So V2 in parallel, you can see there's two resistors. There's one resistor here and one resistor here. You have to attach both of them because even if you get them assembled, whether you're buying them from Sabre Bay or you're buying them from the Sabre Armory or Dimitri himself, maybe Dimitri will do this if you ask him to. But if you're buying for, let's say, Sabre Bay, and you tell them to assemble it, they're going to assemble it probably with both of these resistors, which forces you to use the parallel option. So you have your two resistors, and your data line is not going to the D1 pad, but rather to the D2 pad. And then the resistors are acting sort of as jumpers, allowing the, uh, the connection to both these pixels on the board which are on the underside, you can't see them, but they're, the five pixels on the board are being powered as well as the blade, which would go to data one. And I believe that's what this jumper is doing here or this resistor. So that's in parallel. Now, in series has the same resistor here, but you have this small jumper. There's a small set of these two pads right here. And this could be a little more complex because those pads are really small. Now this is not a resistor, it's just jumping. It's bridging this pad to this pad. So that could be a solder glob. That could be maybe like one of these legs from a, um, like, like these stems. I don't know, can you see? Yeah, you can see that. From, from maybe just like a uh, three mil, three mil or five mil accent LED, right? Cut to size and then just sort of bridged and then v4 which is independent which is how i usually go because there's only one resistor so from a hardware perspective i don't mind running two wires the 30 gauge wires that you're using they're small and in most installs there's plenty of room for that i'll just run the two wires and only do the one resistor if i want to keep it simple or maybe wire management is an issue like maybe in in the 89 duku where there's very little room i i only want the one wire and therefore i have to deal with not only doing this resistor which you have to do in any of these three options so that that's you know that's fine <clears throat> um but then i'll have to deal with with bridging those two jump those two pads and then here if I go in parallel, which I hardly ever do because of this issue, I hardly ever do in parallel. And those new economy PCBs that, that just hit the Saber Armory, K, Cal's KR Saber, they're good. They're cheaper. They come where, where you don't have to deal with resistors. Um, but they run in parallel. So those five PCBs on the, on the, those five pixels on the PCB, you can't style or control independent of the blade. So again, going back to this, these five pixels are, are, oh, sorry. These five pixels on the PCB are only going to do whatever these five pixels on the blade are which one you typically won't ever see because it's in the blade socket. And two, those pixels hardly ever do anything anyway. They don't do blaster block. They don't do drag. They don't do any sort of lockup. So keep that in mind because when you take your blade out and you have a blade plug in there, what are those five pixels doing? Sometimes they're doing stuff. Most of the time they're not doing anything but the main blade color 
So keep that in mind. Um, we spoke through independent. We spoke through in, in parallel and in series. Um, so yeah, so this is the way I normally go. I go normally go independent because it's one resistor on the PCB. It's one extra data line, which is 30 gauge. Um, and it allows me to define two blades, not sub blades, but two blades. And, and of course you do need to do the shared power pins because, um, with the stock NeoPixel connector, because those pixels on board, um, if they're, if they are doing something different than the main blade, well, your blade might be off, but those five pixels might be on. So you have to tell Profi to continue to send power, even though the blade is off. Okay. Or vice versa. Your accents might be off, but your blade might be on. Okay. Um, and this was just more for my notes, kind of explaining the use cases of subblades and independent, which I didn't have to refer to. Um, so I, I hope that helps because I, I get questions from people from time to time that might question why I, I do things the way I do them or, um, you know, we might be discussing the install and I want to understand and set proper expectation. Because if we go, you know, now that these economy PCBs are out, somebody might say, look, I want to save 10 bucks. I'm going to use the economy one, but you've just limited your option to this. And I just want to make sure that, you know, when I'm doing an install for somebody, that they understand how this works and, and know what they're getting. And again, you know, in, in my opinion, I'm going to drive a customer to the non-economy route because I'm doing the install, so the complexity is removed, and I'm not, re you know, I'm not really charging more or less for this option, it's just the cost of the component. And for $10, it's just not worth losing flexibility. With that said, if we have that discussion and the customer's like, no, that's fine. I don't, I don't really see those five pixels unless there's a blade plug in it, and if it's red, it's red. If it's not showing a drag effect, it's not doing it, that's fine. But at least we had the conversation. I've explained how it's going to work and what the limitations are. And they, ha they can then make an educated decision as opposed to an uninformed decision. Um, yeah, so I hope that works. I hope I said this all right. I hope I didn't get it wrong. I believe I said it all right. But, um, you know, guys, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Um, leave a comment. If, if I said something wrong, let me know. I can take criticism, um, but hopefully I got it right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful.